All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. And today is September 30th. It's a recap day for BYU football. And that's coming up right after this. All right, everyone, welcome back to Just Justin. I am Justin, and yes, I will be recapping the BYU-Cincinnati game that took place on Friday night, September the 29th of 2023, and today is September 30th of 2023. It's a Saturday. Last night, Cincinnati came into Provo for BYU's home opener in the Big 12, and it was, it's going to be a great game, and you know why? Because it was sold out. It was 63,834 people in that stadium. I mean, that was a rocking stadium. All right, and so if you look at the stats, that's just the total stats overall. Okay, Cincinnati had 25 first downs, BYU only had 17. Passing had 256 for Cincinnati and 225 for BYU. 242 rushing for Cincinnati and 70 for BYU. Total yards, 498 yards for Cincinnati, almost 500 yards. And BYU, 295 yards. The time of possession was 35 minutes and one second for Cincinnati and BYU had it for 24 minutes and 59 seconds. So you're like, oh my gosh, Cincinnati dominated BYU. And yes, they did. However, Cincinnati had two turnovers. BYU had zero. Those two turnovers led to 14 points. Okay, so let's, let's get into the game. All right, so it was a sold out crowd at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. BYU got the ball. The first drive, they didn't really do much. They kind of puttered. And they, you know, they puttered away. Of course they did. Um, Cincinnati came out. Their first drive down the field, they threw a pick at six. And BYU was up seven, nothing. The Bearcats were driving down the field and they had a fourth and one at, I think it was a fourth and one, at the 37 of BYU, BYU's 37 yard line, and they couldn't convert. And so they turned the ball over on downs. When you took over, they couldn't produce much. I'll, I'll give my analysis later. But yeah, BYU couldn't convert much. And then Cincinnati, um, they came down the field, and the quarterback, he ran the ball. I mean, the quarterback was running the ball all the time. And by the end of the first quarter, BYU was seven, Cincinnati was zero. So the total yards for the first quarter, Bearcats, 108 yards. BYU, 29 yards. You're like, oh my gosh, 29 yards and they're up seven, nothing? Well, that's because that pick six. So the Bearcats came down in the second quarter and scored a touchdown, 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, 7-7, seven, seven. BYU and Cincinnati, they were tied at 7-7. Seven, seven. I was thinking, Cincinnati is kicking BYU's butt. If it wasn't for that pick six, BYU would still be zero. And the Bearcats came down, and they kicked a field goal to go up 10-7, almost at the end of the second quarter. And with 48 seconds left, BYU started on their own 25-yard line, or 27-yard line, and in four plays... They went down the field and scored a touchdown. I think they had more yards on that whole entire drive than they did in the first quarter. Yeah, so BYU was up 14 to 10 at the end of the second quarter. So halftime came around. They went in. I don't know what these were said, but I know what I would be saying to the BYU players if I was there. Cincinnati was doing an awesome job. They are a good football team. And they will be making a name for themselves here in the Big 12. What are the stats for the very first half? The stats are Cincinnati, 100 yards passing. BYU, 71. Rushing, 154 yards. BYU, 36. Total yards, Cincinnati, 254. And BYU, 107. One turnover, 
for Cincinnati. First downs, Cincinnati had 14, BYU had 6. The time of possession was 20 minute, 21 minutes and 28 seconds, and BYU had 8 minutes and 32 seconds, but yet BYU's up 14-10. That pick 6 really made the difference that first half. All right, so the third quarter, they came out. The Bearcats came out. They had the ball the first um, drive down the field. They couldn't produce much. BYU, I actually, I was watching it on TV, and I was actually watching the Utah-Oregon State game, watching Oregon State kick butt. But um, so we turned over to BYU, and <laughs> when we turned it back over, they were in the end zone. So they had taken that first drive of the second half, and scored a touchdown. So it was 21 to 10. Cincinnati came out and they drove down the field. The quarterback was amazing. He had a lot of runs. And they got down and with an incomplete pass on third down, they had to kick the field goal, which they made, which made it 13 to 21. When Cincinnati kicked off, it went in the end zone. So BYU had it on the 25 yard line. And they worked their way down the field and Chase Roberts, number two, had an awesome catch which led them to a touchdown. I mean, they went 75 yards in four plays in like two minutes, and they had another score. So I made it 28 to 13. And so those drives right there were looking like BYU of the old. I mean, BYU was scoring, passing, you know, doing everything they could and scoring touchdowns. That was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I can watch this all day long. But BYU has a problem, and they are calling timeouts early in the second half. They called one in the third quarter because of a defensive situation that they weren't, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. They weren't focused or weren't organized or whatever. But yeah, they have an early habit of doing that. So after BYU calls a timeout, the Bearcats come out, and the quarterback runs the ball. And he got a lot of first downs on that drive, but they went in and they scored a touchdown, which led it to be 28 to 20. So they were within a one possession game, eight points away. And so BYU was not doing too good on the next drive. They had to punt it away. So the punter punted it, and I don't know what the receiver on the Bearcats was thinking, but the ball bounced in front of him and went up over his head and he jumped up and he touched it. You will, we'll have to ask him what he was thinking. But he touched it, he couldn't get the ball, BYU got it on the 25 yard line and that's when BYU scored to make it 35 to 20. So, you know, we're up 15 points. Or BYU's up 15 points, I'm not, but BYU is up. So, the Bearcats, were struggling to score the touchdowns. They dominated BYU in every aspect of the game. They shut down the rushing attack, but yet they were still 15 points behind. All BYU had to do was establish the running game to run the clock out. And on, when they got the ball back with like two minutes and 48 seconds or something like that left, that's all they had to do was run the ball and not get tackled. Get a couple first downs and the game would be over. However, BYU couldn't do that because Cincinnati was so tight on that running game. They kicked butt at that running game. They knew what BYU was doing and they clogged up all the holes. They got all the running backs. Yeah, 70 yards running. Come on. But BYU had to punt the ball away. Yeah, with about two minutes and I'm not quite sure what the time was. I was too excited. But they had to punt the ball away. And the Bearcats fair caught at that time. Good thing. Or did it go out of bounds? I think it went out of bounds. And they got the ball back. And they came down the field. And they scored a touchdown with 26 seconds left in the game. So we all know what was going on. So the BYU, so Bearcats were 27, BYU was 35. The onside kick. Bearcats onside kicked it. Chase Roberts, of course, they had the hands team out there. Chase Roberts got it 
and fell to the ground. And all BYU had to do was come out and kneel it down, and the game was over. So that game was an awesome game. Here is just my opinion. My opinion only. I'm a lazy boy coach. Okay, I'm sitting on the couch going, this is what you guys should do. And this is what BYU needs to do. They have a bye week this week before they meet TCU in two weeks. So here is a list of things that I think BYU needs to do in these two weeks to prepare for TCU. Okay, they need to work on the dang running game. They need the offensive line to block. I heard that BYU had this awesome, awesome offensive line this year, but yet I have not seen it. The running game has not been too good for Arkansas, Kansas, or um, Cincinnati. Okay, I mentioned that. Get the offensive line blocking better. Yeah, they have good running backs. Use them, utilize them, let them score. And they need to get better organization. You look at the coach, he sends the play in, you get in that formation, and you pay attention to what the offense is doing and make adjustments there. Don't need to call timeouts in the third quarter. I see BYU call a timeout right after halftime. They get out of there, the first play of the game. Timeout because they don't know what they're doing. And they've got to get the quarterback more time. Solvis has a good arm, okay? He is coming along in the BYU program. He's only got one year, and he has the potential to make it legendary, to become like the BYU quarterbacks of the past. Because it is called the quarterback university. You got your Steve Young, you got your Ty Dentner, you got your Jim McMahon, you got your Robbie Boscow, you got your Steve Sarkeesian, who's the head coach of Texas right now. You got Zach Wilson, who's not doing good, too good in the Jets. You got Jaron Hall, who actually played at Maple Mountain High School. He's with the Vikings right now. You've got a good university full of good quarterbacks. And he's coming along. But the offensive line needs to give him more time to get settled to get to the ball to the receivers. Oh, and he's got to learn how to run as well. He's got to learn how to run. But that is what I would work on in the next two weeks. Oh, another thing I would work on, tackling. Tackling, don't be afraid to hit the person. I see a lot of arm tackles are not wrapping up and stuff like that. You go out there and you hit that runner. Make sure they have the ball first, but you hit that runner legally. <laughs> You make sure they know where they're at before they get hit and not where, they're, not where they're at afterwards, okay? I'm not saying cause injuries, but you make some contact. No more of this little, ooh, I don't want to hurt you hits, okay? You need to hit the opposing players. Everybody needs to do that. That is it for the recap of the Cincinnati BYU game here in Provo, Utah at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. That was a good game. Cincinnati is going to be trouble throughout the conference, even though they are 0-2 right now in conference play, and they are on a losing streak of three. They have a good team. They had dominated BYU the whole game. But those two mishaps on Cincinnati's side, that pick six, and that touched ball, touched punt. I'm not sure what he was thinking. But that touch punt led to 14 points. If they didn't have those 14, 14 points, Cincinnati would have won that game. Cincinnati is a good team. Now, BYU's got to prepare for TCU, and that's in two weeks on October the 14th. They haven't announced the times yet. I don't know why they just can't say, this is the time you're playing. So I know. Right? But TCU is going to be a big challenge for BYU. And that is it for today. And I would like you to come back on the next recap. I would really appreciate it. You can hit the bell notification down there after you subscribe so you get notified when I upload a video. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And until the next video, I will see you later. Bye.